effect of changes in taxes recently levied on social media platforms and mobile money has set off a combustible debate and an uproar from the public. This backlash prompted the president to order that the 1% be lowered to 0.5%. However, this will only be approved by parliament, whose mandate it is to make laws. What are the likely implications of these taxes on an ailing economy? On the spot night is an expert panel of four, including Moses Kagwa, the director of economic affairs in the finance ministry, Abubakar Mayanja, an economist, Silva Kayondo, a lawyer, and Evelyn Namara, a technology entrepreneur. Gentlemen and ladies, thank you for honoring our invitation. You're most welcome and you are on the spot, all of you. The national spotlight is on you. Let me begin with you who is seated so close to me here, Mr. Moses Kagwa, because you are also a director of economic affairs in the finance ministry. And we have an economy that is yet to rebound fully from a slow growth. And some people would suggest that why, if we want uh, issues of fiscal prudency, why don't we go and sell off those expensive fuel gasolers that are driven by VIPs instead of introducing something that can hurt the poor? Uh, thank you very much. Good evening, viewers. Uh, right now, our expenditure requirements amount to 32.7 trillion. And uh, you cannot finance that through selling off the so-called fuel guzzlers because one, there are not very many, and two, even if you sell them, you wouldn't get the kind of money you're talking about. So you have to look for alternative means of financing your budget. And um, what we did is to look for areas where there is massive consumption. Because if you want to have a good revenue base, you must have an area with uh, massive uh, consumption or massive uh, when the population is big so that at least you can get your money. And then you impose a little tax on a wide base, uh, and that would, um, um, that would ensure that you do not really hurt the poor so much. Oh, I said, as I was uh, giving a suggestion of the fuel guzzlers of those big cars, but I, as an example, really, you can cut on the wastage, you can cut on the number of, uh, or on, the, on the cost of public administration, you can cut so many other areas. You can make the government lean, and then you'll have much more money for you to save than hurt the poorest of the poor. Yeah, there are many reasons why we have um, a big um, administration, and I don't want to go into that now because that is political, but uh, that is a fact. It's there, and we have to look for the money to finance that. But it's not just because we have a, a very large administrative, administrative costs that we are looking for money, because as you know, we are so much involved now in infrastructure development. We want to develop... Uh, our oil infrastructure, and that costs a lot of money. We are heavily involved in building of Karuma, building of Isimba, and then uh, doing all these roads we have been doing, the oil roads, and also we are heavily involved. In, we, we are looking at the prospects of uh, making sure that uh, we, we have the power, whatever we are going to produce, evacuated from the areas where it is to places where the investors will access it. So. Most of the money that is actually uh, being used is going into production, not just uh, consumption. Let me, let, me, let, let me go to Abu Bakr here, because you're an economist. The New Vision recently carried a headline where it said civil servants were to be rewarded with huge allowances. The MPs also got a tax exemption refund of 10 billion shillings. Do you think we are out of touch with the reality and the elite are trying to steal from the poor? Why the taxes? Uh, to answer very directly, we've been out of touch with reality from economic principles, not emotional or political principles, for over 30 years. We've been spending more than we earn for over 30 years. Now, when you create 112 districts, each of them has a council. That's expenditure. And it's not productive like the director of economic 
Affairs is saying when you have 400 members of parliament who have uh, unfettered access to untaxable income and travels, at one time the travel budget was higher than the health budget. So let's look at public administration and public sector management, which constitute about 50% of the trillions we are talking about. So we are spending more on paying civil servants and politicians more than we are spending on health, more than we are spending on, on education, more than we are spending on agriculture. So how much product, production do you create uh, by paying 400 MPs? Very high salaries that are not anywhere near what the rest of the economy earns. So I think that we need to look back and look at our means as a country, because we're a developing country, you see, Mr. and Mr. spend where our priorities are and cut the size of government. Evelyn, uh, Mr. Kagwahi has said, you know, you spread uh, the tax to uh, the masses, something little, because where there's a lot of consumption massively, but you are tech savvy, I should say. Could we cite any jurisdiction where such a tax on social media has been levied? Tax on social media? Yeah, for example. Yeah. So when I think about um, social media and taxes being uh, levied, at least in other countries, or if you look at other economies, if you look at uh, Europe or America or other places, taxes are levied on uh, internet companies. So the, the income that internet companies actually get, they the governments then tax that. They do not tax the end user. And that's the problem that we are doing in this country, whereby the end user, who is the person who's at the bottom, is becoming you know, the target for this tax. You know, different governments are doing it differently. Different companies, uh, different countries are doing it differently. They're taxing the internet companies, and internet companies have to pay that tax to like the government of Uganda. But the Ugandan government controls this spectrum, this airwave. Don't they have power to, you know, levy a tax? Because this is their spectrum. This is their area. Mm -hmm. So they can levy a tax using their own jurisdiction. Absolutely. They? they should be able to do that. But you see the government of Uganda is not having dialogue with these internet companies. They have to have dialogue with the internet companies and actually start levying this tax. They are willing to speak to people. If you ask Facebook, if you ask Google, they're actually willing to have this conversation. Because in other countries, they actually levy taxes to these uh, internet companies. But unless we engage them and actually ask for this tax, we are not going to get it. So instead of them you know, sitting down and finding a committee and finding ways of actually making these internet companies accountable, and saying that the revenue that you earn is going to be taxed, you can tax VAT on that. But then it shouldn't go to the end users because there's no, I don't know any other country that, I know they've had uh, examples of Colombia taxing OTT. Colombia as a country is actually not taxing end users. They tax the revenue on internet companies. So there's a difference there and we have to get it really right that the end user is not, is not supposed to be taxed for this. No country does that. As long as you pay normal subscription, no one says that you're going to use a certain, you know, a specific part of the internet and you have to pay for it differently. Silva, you are amongst the lawyers challenging the social media tax in the constitutional court. Without going into the merits and demerits of the case, what prompted you to seek litigation? Yeah, um, good evening viewers and thank you for hosting me. It's my first time on the show and I'm grateful for the opportunity. Yes, uh, so what prompted us really is um, a culmination of events that led to that tax, but also its implications. Uh, first and foremost, um, we contend that the tax wasn't made without a thorough consultative process. Uh, I know like the ICT Association of Uganda and the Private Sector Foundation appeared and made representations to um, Parliament um, um, uh, Committee but the side, um, um, the side, um, I mean, uh, representations are never considered. Actually, now even the ICT Association has issued a statement like against um, the tax. So there was no strong uh, discussion. We did not see any keen policy proposal other than a letter from His Excellency the President to the Minister of Finance dated 12th March 2018 saying, hey, by to tax this. 
and the justification is not really much about revenue, but mm -hmm. rather it's about gossip or that kind of thing. So the contention really is that the president's personal views or his dissatisfaction with online criticism cannot be a basis or a legitimate basis for um, tax policy and legislation in this country. Then, but the other strand now relates to the implications of the tax, and this mainly relates to three key fundamental uh, rights. The first largely is the cluster of the political rights, which deals with online participation, um, online expression, and the kind of stuff that will be um, severely affected. So, Silva, what do you make of the present pronouncement just yesterday yeah. on saying he has to lower it from 1% to 0.5%? Because is it his job even mm -hmm. to even lower it? Because I suppose that is the job of parliament to go and debate and then for him to ascend, to ascend it to law. Because if he does not agree with it, how do you think he ascended it to law? Ascended it to law? I mean, well, I, I can't even explain why. I think there is a fundamental... Um, misunderstanding on the president's part and those advising him about how internet say, and mobile money work. I saw the statement where he says the reason say he's taxing, taxing social media is because we donate dollars to internet companies, etc. Whereas it's not true, I mean, all of us pay for data or bundle from MTN Uganda. That money on it has VAT, but also that money it generates the revenue out of which MTN pays, say, corporate tax. And that, so I mean, unless he's saying that, say, for an internet service provider like MTN, to go to an international career, say, like Verizon or AT&T, to buy using foreign exchange. But you do not source for foreign direct investment, say, in the telco sector, asking telcos to come to your economy and then punish the citizens for consuming their services. It doesn't make sense Mr. At all. Mr. Director, what does the government need to do to pragmatically, pragmatically improve the economic growth without really imposing a heavy burden on the poor? Uh, thank you. I, I wanted, first of all, to controvert uh, some of the issues that have been talked about. Uh, the first one is on the administrative costs that uh, they are very high, that we spend more on... Um, administration than on anything else. Uh, I think we can look at the figures. On works, it's, uh, we spend 4.786 trillion. And that is the biggest uh, expenditure sector. Then we spend 2.782 trillion on education. Mr. Director, and, uh, we spend uh, we, 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 uh, on we energy 2.438 yeah. so, trillion. When you look at our budget, and you look at the biggest sectors, they are those ones which are going to drive growth. We are spending a lot of money in agriculture. You may look at agriculture that the budget looks small, but we are spending a lot of money. We are spending money on um, agriculture inputs. But, we are spending, but yes. Mr. Kagwa, do so, we have value for money? What is the unit, unit cost? for all these ventures we're getting into. We are, I'm giving an example. The Ethiopians are, are, are building a dam on, the, 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 the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam on the Nile, which is going to produce 6,000 megawatts of power yeah. at almost, more, almost the similar cost to ours, which is going to produce 600. 600 <laughs> compared to 6,000 megawatts. It can't on be the, the same cost. Well, the other one is no. about $4.5 billion. Dollars. It was like $2 billion. $1.2 billion. Dollars. Yes, so it can't be the same cost. And then you, you, you know you have to compare apples with apples, not apples with oranges. You must know the terrain of Ethiopia and what they are using when they are... And the, the loans, the source of financing for their projects, it's not the same. When uh, Uganda was uh, upgraded from uh, the least <coughs> development, uh, development countries, we could no longer access uh, the concession of financing for most of these projects we would have got before. So we had to go for commercial uh, loans to, fi uh, uh, to finance these projects, and that's why. <coughs> and now coming to you, uh, she also said that uh, in Colombia, uh -huh. there is no uh, OTT tax. But that's debatable, because in, in Colombia, when you use data beyond 15 US dollars, then there is an automatic tax of 4% on that. So that is the catchment area. The OTT is a catchment area. You talk that we should tax Facebook and we should tax um, 
uh, these uh, companies. Yes, but what do you tax them on? You tax them on the revenues that they will receive in Uganda. What is the revenue they receive in Uganda? Mm -hmm. Only the advert revenue, and that is taxed. That is taxed, and we uh, so, but it's not enough. What we are talking about? Look at it. We are talking about 284 billion shillings. We intend to collect from OTT. So that is where the difference is. Now, when we look at taxing the poor, one of the things we have done in this country is that all production, productive inputs, plant and machinery, uh, raw materials, uh, agricultural inputs, are all free of tax. That is a way you try to make sure that uh, you don't tax those things that go into production, but then you go ahead and tax consumption. I want, I want us to have this debate looking into the mobile money tax, but also the social media. And, and, and um, Evelyn, do you think mm -hmm. or do you believe that the, the tax on uh, social media is going to stifle innovation, creativity and, 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 and from, from the Ugandan young people? Absolutely, without a doubt. I mean, if you look at Uganda's population, we have the majority of these youth being unemployed. The majority, more than 78% of the youth actually are unemployed. And what we're trying to do, especially for the unemployed youth, is that you're trying to find alternative ways of actually earning revenue. And for most of us, we're going into entrepreneurship and looking for new ways of solving problems. When you go to innovation spaces and you go to all of these other spaces, you find people who are putting in a lot of work in actually, you know, trying to make ends meet. So when you come and take social media away or when you put a tax on that, with people who don't have income already and they're trying to actually produce some of the solutions that are addressing uh, some of the biggest challenges we have in agriculture, you talked about agriculture, in healthcare, most of these are run on uh, social media and uh, using mobile money and mobile payments um, as, as a way of a business model. So it's definitely going to disturb a lot of uh, innovation in this country. It's in fact, there's a Ugandan scientist who recently won an international award for an application he created that can help people to um, test malaria without really get, get pricking, uh, yes, the, I, I, getting blood on, drawing blood. Mm -hmm. So those are the kind of innovations that those are the kind are of happening innovations. in the country. And I mean, for us, I mean, I'm a tech entrepreneur and I can speak from uh, experience that some of the things we go through every day, if you look at mobile money, for instance, the business models, every single person has innovated around mobile money because it's the easiest way to actually, you know, get payments out. And for all of those businesses that are looking at mobile money as a component of payments, they are going to be uh, affected by this. Social media, if you think about online marketing, if you think about advertising, if you think about mm. exportation, yes. all of this is being affected by social media. And so I don't know where this notion of, you know, people are on social media for spreading rumors is coming from mm. because people are doing actual businesses that the government, you must know, well not this, that the government is not providing all the jobs that can you know, absorb, yeah. absorb all of yeah. the, the talent that we have in this country. So if we are trying to do something and you're again trying to put all of these taxes over and above, where are we headed? So, uh, Ab Ab Bakker, are the managers of our economy not really appreciating what he's talking about or they just don't get it? Yeah, for me, I think I'm glad that the director of economic affairs is here. Let's start with the principles, which mm -hmm. were invented long ago by Adam Smith in his book, Wealth of Nations, chapter 5, book 2. The principles of taxation, equitability. So when you go to a bank, there are 4 million bank accounts. Those people earn a really relatively decent income, not too decent. Mobile money accounts are 20 million. This is the bottom of the pyramid, so it's not equitable. If I go to a bank now, that's another principle, double taxation. I've earned my income. I need to send money to my grandmother. How is that a taxable activity? How do you tax that? Now, that means if my grandmother sends to her sister, you tax it again. That, and so right. you stop the velocity of money. So that's another principle broken, double taxation. Then you look at regressive tax. So I, I, hear, I think I hear at NTV one time you are talking about MPs getting, uh, getting iPads. So for me, when I saw the tax, uh, when I got to get it, I, I was surprised because I don't know how it passed, first of all, the Ministry of Finance, and then it got to Parliament, and then it passed Parliament. 
because it has broken all the principles of taxation mm -hmm. that have been there for a very long time. Now, going back to OTT, Facebook is not for rumors. Mm -hmm. In the modern world, in the world of digitization, this is a shop. It's an exchange of information. If you run a radio station, for example, NTV, God forbid if I had to pay tax to switch on NTV at home just to switch it on. NTV, it's its responsibility to earn revenues, and then the surplus of that revenue is taxable. But and then when you the, sell the, the, the service, reality is through pay TV, which, is, which I'm sure they are doing something that's illegal, mm -hmm. Ugandans are paying. For to watch some of these stations, yet they are free to air. Yeah. Now, so uh, when you have uh, a radio uh, station and, and like, your, that, uh, like your, because it's a free radio. to air, yeah. but whoever is using some of these pay TV companies, mm. you can, if you are run of, you have run out of money, you, your decoder will not show you the free to air. Yeah. Exactly. So what I'm trying to say is, from an economist's point of view, we've broken all the principles of taxation, regression, equity. Here's another unfair thing about the mobile money tax. I'll use a very live example. If I get paid money, every single penny I've ever got has already been taxed, and I bank it. If I do a transfer to someone else, the bank provides that service and charges me a fee for which the director of economic affairs levies a 10%, which he has now increased to 15%. The bank has charged me, and it's created new value, which he has taxed. But me, who has done the transfer, he has already taxed that money. And now, if the person I transferred to also transfers, now the unfortunate part of this is that it's happening to the bottom of the pyramid. Mm. Right now, I can do a transfer in the bank, and my incidence of tax will be on excise of the charge the bank levies. But here, we have mobile money. It's a similar thing. I've received money on my phone, which has already been taxed, and I'm transferring it to someone else. The MTN uh, company, has already paid a tax on that excise for the charge. Now you're leaving also the transfer. Now, contrary to popular belief, I want to agree with her. This mobile money phenomenon, I was surprised that the Bank of Uganda wasn't up in arms, has created velocity of money and the movement of transactions. And all these young people I know that I meet are doing business because of this platform. And MTN is a public company in South Africa. I read their annual reports. It's not that they are making a lot of money out of mobile money. It's a burden for them. But because of social corporate responsibility, they've kept it. The finance people have wanted to cut it for a long time. So I would like the director to convince me, really, if I transfer in a bank and you, you don't charge me for that transfer 1%, why would you do that for the poor that are charging 100, uh, sending 100,000? So I said to my grandmother, you take 1%. Okay, yeah. Mr. Mr. Kagwa, if somebody uses a bank platform to send money on mobile money, um, they are not charged the 1%. That's, that's, that's a reality today. Yes. And, 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 and people using that platform, really, we should say, are in a class, I should say, of the super rich, or at a certain level, maybe middle income. Is yes, that fair? They, yes, they are. But I think uh, when uh, my brother Abu started, he said, the super rich will have already paid taxes because they are visible. They are in the formal economy. The guys who are using, the majority of the people who are using mobile money are in the informal uh, economy. And the informal economy is very difficult to tax because there are no handles. So you must have a handle somewhere where you can get the informal economy. And uh, that is how the charge, the 1%, came in. Regressivity. Regressivity doesn't come when you have a tax which is at value on percentage. Because if I'm sending 45,000 shillings, I'll pay 450,000, 450 shillings. If I'm sending 1 million, then I'll pay 10,000. So the higher you, 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 you the, the higher the amount, and the higher amounts are actually not, not done by the poor, but by the rich. And, he, uh, and also, we, we have noticed we are talking so much about the poor. Yes, but the poor, are the ones who are accessing government services most. Hmm? Which ones? So the, the, all the <laughs> services of government, they belong uh, to UPE, the entire public. UPE is accessed mostly by the poor because Abu, you don't take your children to UPE schools. When they fall sick, they go to Mulago, they go to Chirudu, they go to Kawenta, all these uh, public 
institutions. That's what they access. So we have had a number of people who have been in this country and they're not making a contribution let me, let me, to, let me to let the me development of this country. Tax is a quid pro quo payment. And a tax, and a tax I want also to mention that tax, as we are calling it, is not a punishment. And that's the first thing, that when you pay tax, you are being punished. Or when you are paying tax, you are being prohibited from doing something. It's not. It is a contribution. And we have to look at the impact of it. And that's what we should be discussing. Okay. That is the impact so high that it is discouraging someone from using social media. Hmm? And we have told you that on social media, uh, w when you access when you're accessing internet the tax is not there yes i think so you, you when you're doing I, research i think the, the tax, tax i think the tax there. yes is it high is only yes it is yes, mr kagwa yes. it's prohibitive WhatsApp, it's prohibitive Skype. because i know of somebody yes, actually sir. chairman yes. of casita yes mr everest kayondo yes who was supposed to make a transaction of around 2.6 million shillings yesterday but one between Kampala and Masaka, and he realized that was going to cost him about 90,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. So he had to call up his guy in Masaka and say, hey, why can't you take a taxi, 10,000, to and fro, that will be 20,000, and then I will, sa I will save 70,000 shillings. Th there yes, is, there is that. But, but of but course it has cost him time and other things. Uh, so in a way, this tax is prohibitive. But let me ask you, Silva, if we are to evaluate government's delivery of services, does it match the level of taxes being paid? Yeah. Well, uh, but Mr. Um, my friend uh, uh, from our government has made some assertions that should not go um, unchallenged. One, I think, let's get it clear from the very start. There is nothing called, I mean, OTTs is a misnomer. Because mm -hmm. traditionally, I mean, you had, um, you had communication services delivered through certain boxes. Now came the internet and everything is delivered over the set of boxes, hence over the top. Actually, the term from its very root was coined by mobile network operators to refer to the new competition of the internet that's come. So to m reframe the debate, this is not tax about what it is. It's tax on the internet. There is no tax on internet. It's tax on I and two. If you read the, the, the excise duty law very clearly, it's it you who has not. not read the law, and okay. here I say why. You've just misrepresented to the audience that research is not included when, in the tax. You, in the bill, actually, research and uh, research and was education. excluded mm -hmm. and educational was purposes. Excluded. But in the yes. act, in the act, it is that excluded. Exc Please. Well, it's not. We, 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 we'll discuss that, but I'm telling then you, that is, two, that is it. It's excluded. Then, too, I think Mr. Kagwa's, uh, uh, the, uh, yes. his definition of infrastructure is also flawed because whereas he's talking of hard infrastructure there is something we call soft infrastructure and this is where the digital economy lies it's also a gateway and the government's mind is fixated with the hard infrastructure at the expense of the soft infrastructure while other countries are onboarding citizens onto the soft infrastructure you can have a posh good road but to a guy like me it's irrelevant i mean i i don't want I mean, what value are you transacting there? Okay. So I mean, so it's that. The okay. last point I wa I'd like to make is he has said retrogressivity does not apply on ad volerem. I'd like to put it to him that the social media tax is not an ad volerem tax. It's in fact a fixed fee Abu of 200. I was about the 1% mobile money. That's what I was responding yes, to. Yes, so, but is the social media tax an ad volerem tax? I was talking about no, mobile money. No, to you. It is, is the, not. Okay, okay. fine. So, okay, yes. you, you have uh, given us the biggest chunk of the money for the budget is going on into infrastructure. And we, we, are, we, are, we are lucky we can travel on, on tarmac roads from... Um, Vura in, in, in West Nile to Virunga down in south, southwestern Uganda. But most of these roads we see, what are we transporting? <laughs> we, are, we are transporting <laughs> our agricultural product, produce. You know, this is an agricultural country. What Almost every district in, in this country GDP. is growing something. For example, when you look at coffee. What is the coffee? What, what, is how grown much does agriculture contribute to the GDP? And how much and how does ICT Twenty four point five percent. And how much? And, and, how, and, and how, What is the percentage of those who are employed in agriculture? Uh, agriculture com contributes twenty four point five percent of GDP. Unemployed. Unemployed is about 
80 percent. <laughs> so you have, you have a majority of your people contributing yes. less to your GDP. That's it. Yes, and that's one of the issues that we are trying to look at. The majority of our people are not contributing. So what are what are we doing? We are trying to focus on agriculture and making sure that people move away from uh, subsistence agriculture to go into commercial farming so that they can make a contribution. But so we, that have we, we, have we, we just seen them out on some summer. Ugandan roads, Mr. Kago, with roasting. Some roasting maize. people roasting maize and cassava uh -huh. on, on, right. on, on, this, on the tarmac roads. Yeah, they could be roasting the maize the, and was cassava. Was that really the reason why but, the road was but, but we, we, No, the reasons were, contrast, uh, were contracted for, uh, for production. And whereas some of those roads were like that, but you can see a lot of changes that are happening in so many places. Mm -hmm. It is not as it was initially. Because now people are becoming productive, you, can, you no longer find uh, that phenomenon on the roads anymore. It's not there. Uh, if it's there, it's very, very limited. Uh, so e Evelyn, Mojisha Muntu on his Twitter account says, if Uganda is ranked 24th most corrupt out of 174 <laughs> surveyed <laughs> countries, there's a likelihood most of the money will end up stolen. Mm -hmm. uh, do you agree with him? And how, how can we stop the hemorrhage? So, I mean, this is, this is the whole point. Let's go back to why there's actually an outrage about the stacks. And I was having a chat with him even before we came online. And he was saying that we, tax has always been there. Why is this, you know, why are we so out there about the stacks? The reason is because we do not see value for the taxpayer's mm -hmm. money. And, uh, you know, I've had conversations saying that we, we, can, we can pay the tax and then, you know, start asking for the accountability. But we have to see from what's been happening right now. You know, we pay taxes every day. And uh, I think people are open to paying tax. But unless we see the value for that tax, the infrastructure, the roads, there's so many potholes in different roads, even just here in the capital of Kampala. And so when people see that and you're like, I'm paying my money to do this, why should I pay more money where I do not see value for it? And uh, so I think that's the, the, the basis of people having a step back in terms of, of, of paying the tax. We have a lot of corruption and uh, we, we, we are doing so less about it. And because of that, you cannot tell me that right now you're going to have it all right. And once we give you the social media tax and mobile money tax, suddenly everything is going to do is going to go away. You have to put in place different measures that we see as a country that is actually trying to curb that right now, so that for us we can have you know some sort of belief that it's going to happen. But Bakker, that, why why do we see this kind of rage? Yet Ugandans have been paying taxes, and mm -hmm. in fact they pay a lot uh, through payee, through what, everything you buy. There's a tax on it. Why why do we see the, the, the unity in sort of resentment of this tax? Yet taxes are being paid every day. You go on a, on a, on a fuel pump, the pump price is up by 100 shillings now, which is not 100 actually, it could be 800 shillings. Is it because, because they feel they are paying directly? Yes. It's a direct uh, tax. I know why people are so outraged, including myself. Because with all due respect to the director, I know they work very hard. But this particular time, the first reason is every Ugandan is very worried about jobs, especially those who move around. And when I travel on the road, mm. I see kids. And I always ask myself, where are they going to work? Now, I've been a practicing economist for, for over 15 years. And uh, if I find any other four people, three of them have emerged out of this ICT sector which just mushroomed and took over and is now 50% or so. That is why there's an outrage. Now, all these young people that I know in the hubs that have mm -hmm. somehow found a living are outraged. Another reason is when somebody says that rumor mongering uh, is, a, is a reason uh, for tax, it's, it's, a, it's a rather... It's the interpretation is wrong because some of us were in tune. Because remember, we are competing in the world. Mm -hmm. So how do people in the world know that you have maize to sell? Mm -hmm. They go on the internet. Facebook is the biggest is the biggest channel. Some of these things that they are calling are rumors are actually outlets for our products. All these young people that are drawing art pieces, we are talking about exports. That's an, a reason why there's an outrage. The other reason why there is an outrage is because of the manner in which it was done. Usually economies, when they are going to, in, to bring something that will change the structure, they give people some level of notice. So they pass a tax and say, okay, it will come in next year. That allows companies like MTN and those on top of it, the young people like the Evelyns and the what to plan. 
tax the other principal I forget it should not be arbitrary there should be some consultation and some time to adjust then the most important point is that we have a very huge current account deficit if you want to understand it in simple terms we sell much less than we buy from the rest of the world that's why you see the Uganda shilling is always challenged so the economists try to attract capital now capital is very shy and therefore it wants certainty mm. so if in Kenya the corporate tax is a bit less than in Uganda then capital will go to Kenya now as a poor or developing country to think about it positively we cannot afford this mistake because all these people that are not digging on the farm the ICT sector the digitization is where the world is going and now we That's are saying to the world yeah. that we want to tax it no this is where the young people are actually selling their goods how they are putting out their talents the videos they produce they are monetized on, uh, on uh, its export does not mean sugar. It does not mean maize. It means services. How does Abu export services? I'm an economist. If I do something and I send an email, or I upload it, if I upload a video about, say, digital economy or digital currencies, and then I'm paid for that, it's content I've created. And so, so that's why there is an outrage. Okay, Silva, yes, let me take you to another dimension because now we have seen all young Ugandans united in if, if speaking a voice where they, they're saying we don't want this. And I've heard some voices from politicians who have always been on the other side of, of the political divide are like, okay, wait a minute. Thank God you have joined us because when they did ABCD, you were silent. When there was corrupt, you were silent. When they touched the constitution, you were silent. Now they have come for your data and your bundles, <laughs> your, your own board. Where have the young people been? One, um, I represent myself. I mean, I don't represent all the young people in Uganda. We have been doing other causes. I myself, I, decide, I saw the kind of community I'm in. I decided to first get an education, understand the global economy, put in some hours and that kind. Now I'm ready to make an impact in my society in a meaningful, informed way. But two, I mean, certainly you're not going to ask where young people have been because my friend from the ministry has given you the answer. He's told you the tax on is, was being, has, is on poor people who consume most government services. There is a generation like many peers I meet who they've never been to public school, they've never been to public hospital, they have their parents make the roads to their own houses, the parents have even to provide private security guards. To them the state is irrelevant. They only interact with it when it's meeting tear gas, violence and officials extorting bribes for basic things like a company registration to create value. So the government has to win over those kind of things. Two, I mean, you've seen the unemployment rate in Uganda. You've seen the poor education system. That's not inquisitive. It's not. Uh, there has been quite a national destruction of the collective self-esteem of young Ugandans. Poor parenting, you've seen. You've seen the political uncertainty. I mean, where we are in now, the country, the economy is not doing well because of political risk. When the president goes, we don't know what will happen. If he stays, we are cooked. So, I mean, it's a catch-22 situation. So those conditions are not known to favor um, youth um, activism or that kind of thing. So I think, certainly, um, such factors increasing cost of living vis-a-vis -vis a dropping wedge. Um, watch it. It's going to be... V social media has been a venting place for many. Okay. My yeah. worry is if this goes offline. Okay, uh, gentlemen and lady, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, let's discuss more of this. And maybe is our anger misguided? Because I suppose these taxes were proposed by the ministry, debated by parliament, and passed by parliament. Shouldn't we be really tasking our, our representatives in parliament because this is the tax they had to debate about and then had to pass. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot, and my name is Patrick Kamara. And tonight, me and my panelists are trying to uh, discuss the, the taxes that have been imposed on mobile money and also uh, the inter internet uh, services. 
You know, I, I, earlier I, I talked to, I asked Silver to comment on the young people because I can see the energy, the dynamism that has come, and, and of course they are resenting this. And I'm wondering, there have been other things that have not been going right, and uh, their voices have not been heard like now. And, and, and I should also be putting that question to you because I think it is the oh. same generation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the, the troubled uh, generation. The troubled generation. <laughs> no, um, I think one thing we need to know is that uh, the youth have been here. You know, they keep saying that the youth are the future, the youth are the now. We are here and we are the now. And uh, what you need to realize is that actually youth have been self organizing. For like the last two years, we've seen youth rising up and saying and demanding for change in this country. In the 2016 presidential and parliamentary elections, you know, when we questioned the uh, electoral commission about the uh, discrepancies in the national register, that was all efforts from the youth. Mm. And I think the moment we started seeding that doubt, like let's not take everything that we gi we they give us as you know the Bible truth. We need to start questioning everything. The youth started, ha started having a voice. So what you see today is an escalation of we have a voice and we have a right to actually, uh, you know, go into the, the, the statistics that they give us and we have the right to actually question them. So, and I think one of the reasons why um, there's an outrage right now more than ever is that we see some of these deliberations going on. We see bills coming up and being passed in parliament. But we are lacking voices. We need to have a multi-stakeholder process whereby we have youth voices on the table. We have the small business owners on the table. And we have all of these different sectors on the table. Bring them in, hear their views before you pass any bill. Take it out to the people, understand their views, collect this public um, gathering information, and then make your resolutions. So many different other countries are doing that. I don't know why we can't do that. And it's because we do not have an input in some of these regulations that when they come out, you're like, hey, wait a minute. How did this get to this point? So we need to be a more inclusive you know, uh, economy. We need to be a more inclusive government. And we need to bring youth on the table as opposed to thinking they're always on the other side. Mr. Director, in June, Finance Minister Matia Kaseja said they had recommended a zero 0.5% tax on mobile money, but that he was surprised uh, Parliament approved a different rate of 1%, which he was not aware of. So the question is, who, who then smuggled this thing? Do you th was it smuggling? No, there was no <laughs> smuggling. And I think uh, <laughs> when Bokai Saija was being uh, misquoted, to say the least, because when we went back and talked to him and said, is this... Uh, correct? He said no. I was saying that uh, there, there could be an opportunity for us to review this tax if the impact is more than what we thought because uh, there is no law here that is made in stone and that cannot be changed. So that was the context in which he was talking and he said you had been mis misquoted. So, uh, so Silva, when the president says he's reducing it to 0.5%. Really, the best way maybe he could have put it is saying he's taking it to, par to Parliament to review, right? Well, I mean... I, is it his job to reduce it? I, well, I mean, we know how the country is being run. I think <laughs> it's the fusion of the president and the institutions and uh, it's self-evident in so many ways, I mean. So, uh, and I don't want to be dragged into the petty politics of it because I know he knows it, that that's not his mandate. And I mean, I have serious things to discuss other than the president and what is done and what is not done. Um, my major contention is how do we get like out of this? So, we've proposed a couple of measures. I mean... The European Union is coming up, say, with the digital uh, single market strategy, DSM. I mean, here, what are we doing, say, as East African community? As Uganda, I mean, our internet penetration is about 35%. Let's fatten the bull first and then talk of slaughtering it. I mean, about 10, 11 million Ugandans are on active on social media. But if we negotiate, say, with these multinational OTT companies, as they call them. Our stake is bigger. We can move towards a regional framework that's there. Or we could play into the way. So we are 
I mean, if it's not territorial, Ugandan focused, requiring them to license here, pay licensing fees, then pay corporate tax, it could be a regional effort. Or, as other institutions like the International Telecoms Union are doing, they're also looking for a global solution, a universalist approach, to say, give us the number, say, of users in every country. We make like a collective global pool of where these revenues come then the respective nations will share that revenue that's coming out. Now, there you're having a discussion. But the attitude I see from like my friend of minist from Ministry of Finance here, the ICT Association of Uganda is wrong, the Private Sector Foundation of Uganda is wrong, industry experts are wrong, only they are correct. Don't we cannot discuss <laughs> with Kenya, <laughs> Tanzania, uh, even, even, even in, are uh, wrong. Uh, on the risk of sounding like a, a mouthpiece of uh, those who have proposed this, this tax, let's face it, six, seven years ago, you'd really not even um, go on Facebook and do whatever you could. Mm -hmm. There has been a major investment on increasing uh, uh, internet penetration, the broadband. You can do so much that you could not have done maybe 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So this means an investment has been done. And there's 35% penetration. And we want more, maybe from village to village. Mm -hmm. And that will require many. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you appreciate that fact? I appreciate that fact because I believe that, you know, you have to come from some point to get to another. But like he said, we are at 35% penetration. The internet is supposed to be for everyone. Now, instead of increasing the penetration of internet so that every single person gets access to the internet, you cannot start putting all of these different But, but, but I, do you appreciate the fact that... The, the penetration increasing internet to every village will require money. It will it definitely require that even the, uh, the, that infrastructure also has been provided by, by investment, yes. putting in money. That's what I'm saying. Because I, I remember 10 years ago or even 15 years ago, mm -hmm. all of us would go to Kampala Road and go in a cafe and then you wait and then you, you want to send an email, it take forever. Yeah. But there has been a tremendous change. There's definitely been a tremendous change, but there's other ways of finding revenue. Like we said, tax the internet companies. There are so many different ways of finding that revenue as opposed to going to the bottom of the pyramid, to going to the people who are trying to do things on the internet and then saying, let's take that tax away. The thing is, where is the bottom line right now? You know, do we have the resources as the people who are trying to innovate on the same internet are being throttled and then you're saying, okay, we are, we are trying to do this because we want to increase the internet. It just doesn't make sense if you're killing it for me right now, who's doing the business, but you want to increase it in the future. So it just doesn't make sense right now for you to make it impossible for the people who are already on the internet to do business and yet you want to increase it for... Um, increase the tax, make, make us impossible to, to do business and then saying you want to build more infrastructure. And just a minute, build. Patrick, yes, and sir. I think that's important mm -hmm. on the infrastructure side. Actually, contrary to popular belief, I mean, Google invested mm -hmm. in a fiber optic cable here. 500 miles, they laid that cable. Currently, there is an ongoing relationship, say, between Airtel and BCS, which is supported by Facebook, for a $170 million investment in infrastructure. Those are all those are OTT companies. Mm -hmm. And then the minister comes and tells the public that well, there but is but but, but, but but before they yes. make an investment decision, yes. you have to have the, the risk profile of the country has to be lowered. Yeah, you have to see that, that the country mm -hmm. is stable. But also and they have to see that they can make money. Yes. So there is a, there's something they see about Uganda. That the, you what can give I'll it tell you what they see about Uganda. Because they see a penetration that's at 35% with capacity to onboard to 90%. Europe has reached near saturation. You do not now find space to even uh, do that kind of stuff. So here, the, the frontier market is here. But lastly, um, to take into my time, um, lastly, that tax proposal you have seen, they have not told you that the money is going to be invested in rural infrastructure, that kind of stuff. It's just as blind. I say they will get this. Yeah. Beyond every like this, there should be like an addendum or a KPI so that at the next year we are not debating the same thing. They should tell you if you've taxed you 350 billion or something as they claim, this is the expected broadband, these are the areas to be covered, I and here is why. That's a very important Yeah, but, but they don't have a record there. of... Uh, uh, you know, implementing some of the policies they make, and I mean, there's no record, there's no, there's yeah. no. 
We well, know well, them to be Abu, talkers. Abubakar, before I come to you, Mr. Kagwa, maybe this is a good thing. And Ugandans will start demanding for accountability, demanding for service delivery because they are paying directly. So perhaps <laughs> what is happening will be good. And uh, that is when we shall push Mr. Kagwa and the other people who are involved in this to make sure they give us the services because we, are, we can feel the pain we're paying through the nose. I will tell you honestly, it's not a good thing. Yep. And I'll tell you why. Uh, going back to the physical analogy, economics and the big companies were the ones with the physical. Now the top 10 companies in the world, not brick and none mortar. of them are brick and mortar. Yeah. The and these are very based. valuable companies, which means mm -hmm. they've created a lot of value. And our people are trying to get on that chain. Fiscal policy is supposed to be progressive. To give you a stance. When they tax you excise on a cigarette, what we call the sin tax in economic jargon, nobody complains. Have you ever heard anyone complaining mm -hmm. about paying excise duty on a bottle of beer? No. It's a very bad thing from now, if I go a little bit deeper into economics, uh, the new theories of growth, and they're called the new theories of growth, but some people may have already left university when they came. I was lucky that I, I, I looked at them. The depth of the financial system is more important now to facilitate payments and the movement of money than the physical. Because this mobile money system was at the heart of our transformation. And internet was also at the heart of that. So as an economist who also cares about the country, I was seeing that trend. Now, we're not saying that the government has not done good things. I don't want to sound like that. For example, one of the reasons they're coming here is the security. Government invested and has done very well on security. But in economics, we, we, still, have, we still have some way to go. Okay, there, ha there could have been, you know, when you're judging, you don't judge because of the most recent mm -hmm. incidences. You judge over a period of time. Now, mm -hmm. the impact of this tax, uh, according to my own projections, which I can't go into here, is going to be very negative in GDP terms. And yet we are already struggling to strengthen the pie. Even in export yesterday, terms. Yes, yesterday, Mr. Kago was talking to a tour operator, and he was saying some of his... Uh, uh, potential visitors or have cancelled because they think it has been understood in, in, out of, out of, in the outside world that Uganda has no internet, has, you, know, you cannot tweet, you cannot be on Facebook. So those who are intending to come are like, why would I come to Uganda? Yet I cannot be on Facebook, I cannot be on Twitter, I cannot... You see, those are unintended be consequences. Because that is how it has been understood to mean. And yet but tourism what it is. is the biggest foreign exchange and almost for our country. Uh, Mr. Kamara, thank you. Uh, one, I will start with silver. Silver, to say that the president, when he makes a suggestion, he thinks he has forgotten all the, inst all the institutions, is very wrong. For example, the president has been on record saying that people who are killers should not be granted bail. But he has never intervened when the courts grant people bail. Really? The, yes. He, he has not said, don't grant that person bail. Bail is still granted. Where is and Kaimura? Must, please, please, <laughs> let, let's be honest. I want you to tell me that there was a person, you know, who was, co who was charged with murder, and because the president said they shouldn't be granted bail, they were not granted. Haven't you seen people now, who are released? Please. And then immediately they are arrested. 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 They are the second one is that the president has made a suggestion. He has not said, put 0.5%, and this is going to be subjected to the due process. He has not said, no, don't take it anywhere, no, because he doesn't have that clear. power. And he knows it. He's a very wise person. <laughs> He's just written. I think his tweet was clear, actually. He, has, he said... The one percent was a mistake. Yes. It was yes. supposed to be zero point five. If he said it was a mistake, but he didn't say that. But he said don't it was supposed to well, be zero point five. Please, please. What I'm talking about is the process that is not said. Let it be zero point five today. There is a process. If it's to go to zero point five or even uh, be uh, removed, there is a process for that, and the president recognizes that very well. And everybody who advises him knows it. So let's not uh, I'd like go to inform you that it's two. already 0 0.5. Two. I did a transaction before mm. I came here. But two. why would it be two. him to suggest no, no, no. that? Money, mm. so as I said, money is fungible. People are saying, well, 
It would be okay if this money was earmarked. So he, you know somebody taxation. is giving information yes. that the process you're talking about did not happen. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's already effective without the due process you talk about. <laughs> so and that, the that fusion, the the fusion, the fusion has issued a, 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 that, that is the fusion that of the presidency and the other institution is what Silva was telling no, no, me about. What I was telling you, one, is that this evening, I don't know when the revenue authority has issued because I was in office till almost 9 o'clock waiting for here. But what I know is that we issued... Yeah a clarification to URA on this there matter. Two, but I've, st I've also told you that there is a due process and it's going to happen. To If at all, there's a reversal to 0 0.5. It will happen. It is not just going to be... It has a already happened, sir. No, no, no. It's not going to be a proclamation. But it has already it's happened. It's a decree. I said a due process is going to happen. Let, so me, take you, let, let, let me take you back. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, we, 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 we find that the law as it is is regressive or it's not just like the tax sir c can you order silver <laughs> can you to order because he's gentlemen i, I gave him all I, his I, opportunity i think to he's a very silver, respectful please. Please debater respectful. he gave you all the time yes and some of the issues you and and and, and the points you raised he was not happy but he still he kept his cool yeah okay. so please let us uh, thank you okay thank you mr Wakama. uh there are times when we, we have re realized that this law is not going to work for one reason or the other. And that time we do not implement it. Then go to Parliament to give us retrospective authority. That's why I said that the due process is going to happen. And we talked about sin taxes. Uh, Abu talked about sin taxes, but uh, from my experience, because I've been in this, you cannot just add all the taxes you want on beer and you think people will not complain. Beer people have complained and we have seen it in the figures. Sometimes when we increase the excise duty, you find that the, the revenue has dipped. That's just that the, the laws complaint. of demand. The that demand is the curve is downward sloping. If you increase can the you cost of a service, Abu, Abu, quantity demanded goes Abu, down. It's please, a principle. Mr. Kamara, can you put him to order? <laughs> so, there is that. So, we, we want to see all this. It's not like syntax. And I've also, I've also mentioned, and I want yes, to reiterate yes. this, that tax has never been a punishment. It's a contribution. Let us look at the impact. And I would have loved somebody to come and say, if you impose to, uh, 200, and percent, uh, 200 shillings on OTT, the impact is this. And we are going to see that people are going to stop using it because of 200 shillings. That's what we would have been debating here. The, the actual numbers, because we've looked at the numbers. So, okay, I, I think, I think, I think the wouldn't you... Not big, it's couldn't, minimal. Couldn't you have come out with other ways of getting this money without making people just pay it direct? Because I think that has also been the problem. Because if you, you embedded it in the data or you embedded it in some other way, mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. still retrieve that money without necessarily people paying it direct. Yes, we, we are looking... are paying for data. We, we are looking at... Uh, because because I have a feeling, even though I don't agree with it, that if yeah. it is embedded in some way, we wouldn't even be having all this. Yeah, but then they wouldn't do that also because, I mean, if you, they add it on data, we're already, we're already paying a tax on data. We're already paying a tax on airtime. Mm -hmm. So you cannot bring it. That will be a double taxation on there's no, there's no ta There's no excise duty on data. And uh, why it wasn't actually put on data was because we wanted to segregate between um, social media and then Internet and Facebook, all that stuff, so that the people who are actually going to Internet uh, are are not burdened with this tax. But they're paying VAT, right? Yeah, That's they're paying VAT. Pay VAT. So, so sir, let tax. me just now, okay, without getting back. emotional, try to expound why I don't like the idea of the impacts. You see, some people say simply, two wrongs don't make a right. Uh, the premise from which I'm coming is that there's been a violation of some principles that have been established over 200 years. Let's ask ourselves a question. Does Kenya have this tax? Does Tanzania have this tax? Rwanda. Does South Africa have this tax? Are they stupid? South Africa has the most advanced tax system. Then secondly, we have a real need to allow the sector to grow before we tax it. Then coming back to Evelyn's point, where's the incidence of the tax? That's the regressive nature. If Facebook is the one you want to target, that's a big company earning good money. Mm -hmm. You target it through your laws. Yep. and you tax it. But don't tax the end user because you're going to kill the innovation. And why I was telling you that the, 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 the companies that are now the biggest in the world are soft is that the world has moved from bricks and mortar to software. It has become more efficient for efficiency. 
And you don't want to kill that. You want to encourage it. So fiscal policy is a stance to tell you that, oh, if we tax this thing, then we are getting revenue from it to support other things. But there are certain things fiscal policy promotes. Quite rightly, like Mr. Kagwa says, there are certain things in the agriculture sector that are supportive. Okay, uh, yes. Silva, I just want to maybe to uh, point to another direction because I know for sure that mobile money seems to have been eating into the market share of the banks mm. in a way, as if it is becoming a competitor. Mm. And, uh, and I also know that the telecos have also been suffering because you're no longer selling airtime like you could because now somebody can just uh, use data for voice and uh, you send a video uh, mm -hmm. because of your 2000 you have, you have, you have, you have, you have uh, loaded on your, on, your, on your phone. So could there have been a connivance? Well, I can't <laughs> speculate about that. But one, our friend from the ministry has also told another lie on the impact. Actually, contrary to his assertion, when the, IC the ICT Association of Uganda and PSFU appeared before parliament, they took an impact statement. I have it here and I've adduced it as fresh evidence in the court case. This is what they note. Higher taxation of the ICT sector will negatively affect the growth mm -hmm. of teledensity with a resultant reduction in investment and the sector contribution to government. It ought to be noted that 2017 registered a drop in teledensity from 51.9% to 51.6%. Therefore, increasing taxation will worsen the downward trajectory power figures below. They put the graph and that kind of stuff. And now we've been tracking as well since the tax came into effect up to present day. Indeed, there has been a drop uh, on internet connectivity um, in, Uganda. In, in Uganda. Okay, gentlemen and ladies, we're going to take a break and when we come back, I'll open the lines so that we get the other Ugandans or other people, or Ugandans are watching from the diaspora, uh, uh, talk to so us and tell us what we, we get to hear their views and maybe their questions on this show. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Amara. My guests tonight are, I have Mr. Moses Kagwa, Director of Economic Affairs in the Ministry of Finance. I have Abakar Mayanja, an economist. I have Silva Kayondo, a lawyer, and Evelyn Namara, a technology entrepreneur. And we're discussing the taxes that have been imposed on social media and mobile money. And I'll be going straight to you by um, asking you to call the lines, the numbers on, uh, on your screen, and uh, tell us what you think about the tax on mobile money and social media because this is also about you. You will be paying the taxes. So I'm taking the very first caller online right now. Hello. Hello. Good evening, sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? Uh, good evening to you. My name is Albert Mchunguzi. Yes. I'm the chairman of the ICT Association. I'm calling from Kampala. Okay. Mchunguzi on air and you're loud and clear. Yeah. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I would like to commend uh, the panelists Silva and Evelyn Namara, uh, especially for not letting the lies that the Director of Economic Affairs was really putting out in air. So it's very good to have that message coming out very clearly. But also to mention that, and we must not forget that the Parliament was given the opportunity to consider alternative ways of raising money, the money that they wanted. And their projections, we've seen projections that they've presented that they used to make the case uh, at the moment for this financial year being around 284 million, the total amount they expect to raise from uh, OTT tax. But that was based off of uh, the current connecting connections to uh, social media um, uh, without considering the amount of people that will go off or even the fact that actually it was based on the number of internet users, not really based on the number of uh, people who are actually currently using social media. So those two numbers uh, need to be reconciled, and the picture they have about uh, potential revenue is incorrect. The other point without wasting too much time is uh, the director said that the tax is already being collected on advertising revenue by the internet uh, company. Sure. That is not correct. There is no tax that is being uh, collected at the moment, and I agree with Evelyn and Silva that the, the uh, intervention should be on how to make sure these companies are paying tax as opposed to taxing the users 
that is very uh, to take us backwards. Thank, Thank you, you very much, much. Mr. Muchuguzi. Thank you very much. We appreciate your insights on the matter. Let me try to take another caller online. Hello. Hello, good evening. Good evening. What's your name and where are you calling from? Maria, I'm calling from Kreka. Maria, you're on air and you're loud and clear. <laughs> now, this thing is very annoying. <laughs> <laughs> this government yes. is so huge yep. that even if they collected everything, including our Dodo <laughs> money, <laughs> they will never, ever be able to have enough money to support this government. So all those economists there, they should start looking at the size of government. Structuring. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Maria, you think they are, they are most likely they will be coming for your dodo? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the appetite is too high. You know? Okay. Uh, let me, let me uh, take maybe uh, three more callers, and then we can have the panelists respond. I have another call online. Hello? Hello? Okay. Um, maybe... Uh, as Hello? Hello. Good evening, ma'am. You are talking to Tomhairu in Matsueta. I'm in Fort Porto. Tomhairu, you're on air. Yes, to imagine if you can just turn off, uh, if it lower the volume on your TV set so that it doesn't send us an echo, you'll have a very good conversation with us. So you cannot listen to yourself on, 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 on the TV and then have a conversation. Hello to her? Hello. Okay, we have to cut that unfortunately. Um, so let me go to uh, take another caller online. I have a call online. Hello. Hello. Good evening, sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? I'm Julius. I'm calling from Tanzania. Julius, you're calling from Tanzania? Yeah. Okay, you're on, you are, you are on air and you are, you, are, you are loud and clear. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, the telephone connectivity to Tanzania <laughs> has just gotten a problem. I wish I'd listened. Um, so it let me. Be your VPN. <laughs> 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 uh, Julius in Tanzania, so it's unfortunate that we have lost you online. Hello? I have a Hello? call. Yes, good evening. Good evening to you. What's your name and where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Chris. Hello? Yes, where are you calling from, Chris? And be precise and concise with what you have to tell us tonight. My name is Chris. I'm calling in from Boyogere. Okay, you're on air, Chris. Please go for it. I would like to ask uh, Mr. Kagwa. Yes. How... Yes, I'm calling in from Boyogere. Oh, no. I would like to ask Mr. Kagwa how rational it is to tax one, an, one amount four times. Yes. Because I, 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 I deposit 100,000, you charge me. I send it, you tax me. The other person receives it, is taxed. He withdraws, is taxed. How, you, how rational does that look? Okay. Thank you very much, our caller there from Boyogere. And uh, I, I, I can imagine all the, all the, most of the questions are going to Mr. Kagwa. But Mr. Kagwa is a, one, of his, one of a kind because he's been able to stand against a lawyer, stand against an, another economist and an, and, 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 uh, uh, and a, an entrepreneur, a technology entrepreneur. He, he's, he's, he's such a... Uh, hard uh, method. He's such a hard Ugandan. <laughs> <laughs> Very intelligent too and, and with a sense of humility. He can take in a lot. But maybe just one more and call her and then Mr. Kagwa will respond. Hello. Good evening, sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? This is Byron. I'm calling from Zambia. Byron, you're on air. Yes. I would like to ask the director, really, mm. <laughs> whenever they are dry, drafting all those policies, do they forget that principles existed before? <laughs> because what beats our understanding, by the way, is that most of these people, they are elite. They have everything that is required to deliver the best services to our beloved country. But some of us have failed to understand, and they cannot even explain why, really. The basics, the canons, for example, the principles. 
are being followed. I don't adhere to. Okay. Thank, I thank you, Kamara. Thank, thank you very much, our caller there from Zambia. So I'm going to be closing the lines for now. Maybe if uh, time allows, we'll get two or three more. Mr. Kagwasa. Yes, uh, I thank you very much. And uh, dear viewers and listeners, thank you very much for your questions, which I do appreciate. Uh, Albert Muchunguzi, I think we can have a debate on this, but uh, the 284 billion was not based on uh, internet users, but rather on the people were accessing uh, social media. And the number was 7.8 million. And that's how we went into the calculations and we even discounted because we didn't think that uh, people would be using internet for 365 days. So there was a discount to arrive at that figure. Um, you are kind to us as well. It's not kind. It's a, it is a reality. We usually, when we are uh, forecasting, we are conservative. Uh, on the withholding tax on, uh, on advertising that is not being, I mean tax on advertising that is not being collected. When a non-resident provides a, a service to a Ugandan, the person who, to whom a service has been provided is required by law to withhold tax on the payment made to the service provider. And I'll stop there. Uh, Maria from Chireka, uh, you said we look at the size of government, that if we, even if we collect so much money, we'll still not be satisfied. But I want to tell Maria that uh, that is not exactly true, uh, because right now we are collecting about 14.2% from each 100 shillings that is generated in Uganda. That is uh, what you call gross domestic product. Out of that, we are collecting only 14.2%. In countries like Kenya, which we are trying to compare with, they are collecting about 22% of GDP. Rwanda is collecting about 16%. So the effort, our revenue effort is actually still low. That's why we are looking for alternatives to make sure that we increase it. Otherwise will continue having a deficit. You don't want us to borrow eight, uh, eight trillion uh, shillings to finance the budget. So why don't you learn from the Kenyan way? And, and the, the, economy way is a, the economies are different. The uh, Kenyan economy is larger and it's more formal than ours. They have more industry, they have people are, who are... Our economy yes. is bigger than Rwanda, for example. Our economy is bigger than Rwanda. Rwanda is not very far from us in terms of tax to GDP. So um, on... Um, I think it was Chris from Boyogere. Yes, Chris, thanks for your question on the rationale to tax one amount four times. I think it was uh, overzealousness initially on where the, the tax should be. But uh, the tax should be on, um, on received, when you receive, not on your account, because when you receive on your account, you are, you are just converting uh, cash to digital, money, uh, to digital money. So that is not actually a receipt. But when somebody whom you have sent to receives, then that is when it happens and when they withdraw and on payments for, uh, for services. Uh, but uh, yes, the, the, the rationale, of course, is that uh, sometimes when you impose a tax on one, on one part of the transaction, people avoid it. I remember when we started uh, imposing a, a tax on uh, charges by telecom companies on uh, they were charging on mobile money we initially started with sending then the mobile company money companies shifted the base they were no longer ch uh, uh, charging people on on, on sending they would don't charge them only on uh, on withdrawal so that's why you, you need to close uh, those kind of loopholes uh by law from Zambia, do we forget the principles that existed before by we have not forgotten the principles that existed before. Look at the tax system in its entirety and see uh, the rationale and the logic in it. I don't want you to pick one or two things and say we have forgotten. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Kagwa. Um, our time is almost out, gentlemen and lady. So let me ask you, Mr. Silva. Uh, s oh, sorry. Uh, yes, let me be uh, begin with you, Silva Kayondo to make your concluding remark on the show tonight. Yes, I mean, um, certainly Mr. Kagwa makes um, allusions to um, taxable GDP, uh, I mean, tax to GDP ratio and how we are com 
performing compared to peers, but he does not disclose to us that, in fact, I mean, about a decade, a decade ago, we enjoyed um, stupendous growth, which is good, 7% have something. Then it dipped. We were at some level growing at 3.5% and stuff, whereas population was growing at 3.2%. So the population was eating into that growth and therefore. So before you talk of tax to GDP in the first place, there must be taxable GDP. I mean, what alternative area, value areas are we creating where that can be derived from? It's only recently, like this year, when the economy has come back to 5%. So in this sense, really, I call upon young Ugandans. I mean, this, it's not about the Mr. Kagwas, it's about us. So support the petition in all ways you can. Turn up, I'll be there, and let's be strong. Thank you. Okay, Abu Bakr. Yeah, uh, mine will be very brief. Uh, Winston Churchill said that uh, to try and grow a country by taxing <laughs> it is like standing a, in a bucket and trying to lift it. Then the second most important aspect is that of the principles. Uh, the tax is regressive. There's double taxation. It's broken all the principles of taxation. And the third point is that let's start looking at how we spend. If MPs want to help us, let them reduce their salaries. They work for three days and earn more than anybody per month. Some of us work so many hours to get much less than they do. After you've paid your income tax of 30% or so, then everything you buy, you pay 17%. So your tax is about 54%. Now, of the percentage that is left, which is about 47 percent then you go and send your grandmother money and even that they tax you whereas the people who are relatively more wealthy in a bank are doing the same transaction and they're not being taxed so if we are to be equitable really and we know that we are trying to uplift our people why should we tax the poor then the last point that i want to make uh, a tax is a non-quid pro quo payment and again, I'll go back to Winston Churchill. He said that the role of the state is to draw a line below which people cannot fall. So Mr. Kagwa cannot punish Ugandans who want to access UPE that they are not paying tax. They are <laughs> paying VATs, huh? which is 17% every time they consume. Yeah. Okay. So and if they have an informal income, my job and yours is to figure out how do we make it an informal income. So you don't get a I wrong thing, informal. which is informal, <laughs> and your policy is to tax it. That's wrong. Secondly, you, you can't say that because they are not paying tax, we, we should try to target them directly. Tax has to be equitable and not regressive and avoid double taxation. And should not target the people differently. It should be uniform with All their right. ability to pay. Thank you. Evelyn. All right, so my parting shots. In, um countries such as Sweden, uh, Canada, US, and part of Europe, they hold public meeting discussions before regulations are passed. And the reason for this is because they want to uh, involve every single person in, um, in the regulation process. One advice I would give to either our members of parliament or legislators is to please involve people in these processes. When a bill is out, when the drafts are out, let's go out to the communities that we represent. These are the youth, these are people with small businesses. Talk to people on the streets, on the road, understand what the pain points are, and let's come back and then uh, have a transparent way of either putting these drafts online and let people have a, like a request for comments. Let have a period where people can actually have some input within this, uh, on this regulation before it's then table to parliament and then passed. I think if we do that, we will reduce some of this back and forth. But, but the budget from Papa was out for quite some time. The civil society was involved. Uh, CS Back was involved. But, but who the, listened to that? The issues, maybe they were never listened. But exactly. I think there was a discussion before it was passed. And people had a discussion. I remember when the bill was out, we also had views online. Still the youth had already had a discussion on this very show online. here exactly. about the mobile money uh, tax. On the but who listens to that? Okay. So I think we need to change regulation to allow these voices to actually be heard and listened to and be fed into the regulation. If we do that, then we'll not come back to this table and have, you know, regulate about the, debate about the same things over and above. So I think we that's the one collective thing. responsibility. Collective responsibility. Or, or, or responsibility. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. yeah. uh, Mr. Kagwa. 
Uh, thank you so much. I want to thank my fellow pan panelists. You know, it's always good to debate because you learn. For me, I come with an open mind to learn and not to uh, <coughs> to try and show that I'm better than anyone else but that uh, I have my uh, issues. But I I'll start by saying that um, we have been pioneers I in tax on so many fronts. And so when we are the OTT as, as taxes coming to Uganda, you say, which other country has it? I want to tell you that we are the first country in Africa to have a capital gains tax on disposal of licenses in the natural resources sector. Nobody had it. It is after we have put it there that other countries followed. We started with the excise duty on um, telecom companies. Nobody had it. So in that way, we have been uh, <coughs> trailblazers and people have followed. I think there is logic. Some people wait and follow others. Yes, we have also followed certain things that have happened. So because it has not been there before, that doesn't mean that it's wrong. Um, we have talked a lot also about MPs and the budget and what they are, uh, they are taking. But I also want to put it on record that MPs' uh, total budget is 498.7 billion. So when you look at it in, in terms of the totality of our budget, which is uh, 32.7 trillion, it is not so much. It may be, w w there could be arguments that that's a very big size, but also when I look at monies that we require to move that's ourselves. Almost, that's, yes, that's almost that's a, a billion per MP. Th that, uh, that is not uh, <laughs> the, the, the highest. It's not just that they are getting <laughs> cash. It's something <laughs> that they are doing similar well, things. $300,000 okay. so, per year. So, <laughs> yes. And also I want to say that we have actually made a lot of investment in ICT infrastructure. $360 billion. That is our investment. And really, if the way we are the, seeking... That is what really we have system. to do. Yes. It but if we are seeking, the responsibility comes... You know, to be responsible, you must contribute to taxes. And one of the reasons Churchill actually didn't uh, win an election <laughs> after he said this was because of that, because he didn't understand taxation properly. I wish to thank all the viewers and all, everybody who has uh, uh, tuned in for the support. Thank you so much. And uh, I, I, I request <laughs> you to support uh, the yeah, government support. in its efforts to be self-reliant. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. I, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure the guys at the Ministry of Finance are, are like, yes, we have our man in the inside there is doing a good job. You really put up an, an effort. Uh, I'm, I'm humbled by your responses because that was a formidable team you had to face. Thank you very much, Mr. Silva Kayondo. Thank you very much, Evelyn Namara. Thank you, Abakar Mayanja, and of course, Moses Kagwa. And all of you who have been a part of this discussion. Until maybe next week when we have another topic, we will be dissecting them here on this table for the benefit of you and I and everybody else here in our country. We do this because we love our country. Good night and God bless Uganda.